Number 30. For each of the following structures, determine the hybridization requested and whether the electrons will be delocalized. And in this case, we have to do the hybridization for all atoms. Oh boy. But at least they gave us the Lewis structure because the easiest way to do a hybridization or to find a hybridization of an atom is always to draw out the Lewis structure. But they did that for us, so thank you very much for that. All we have to do is just look at this Lewis structure and find out the hybridizations. Now there's a total of five different hybridizations, ranging from sp to sp3d2. And these are just the number of orbitals that are overlapping to form your sigma bonds in your specific bonds between your atoms. So that's why they have S, P, and D, because those are your three orbitals that are going to be overlapping. Now just know that hybridizations, these letters, can be easily memorized by just how many letters there are. So for example, SP2 has one S and two Ps. That's a total of three things. And if I tackle on one more P, that's SP3, and that's a total of four letters. So the number of letters that are in a hybridization name is, is always going to be just, you know, whatever the number of letters are. But that translates into the number of things that are going on around the certain atom. So two letters, two things. Three letters, three things. Four letters, four things. You kind of get the gist. Now just know that one thing is classified as either one whole single bond one whole double bond, so even though there's two lines, we're going to group that together as one thing, one whole triple bond, so even though you see three lines, we're going to group that together as one thing, and then one lone pair, so two electrons. Now, since we have to do all of them, it doesn't really matter where we start, but just know that every uh, element in a molecule will have its own uh, hybridization, so that's why we just have to do it for all of them. I guess let's start with the elements in the ring. So let's maybe we'll do the carbons first. So we'll start with the element carbon up on the top here. So we say to ourselves, okay, what's going on around that carbon? Well, we have a single bond. That's one thing. We have another single bond. That's two things. And we have a double bond. Remember double bonds, we group them together as one whole thing. There are no lone electrons on this carbon, right? I can't group this because that's not the carbon, that's the nitrogen. So this one has three things. And three things, three letters, that's sp2 hybridized. Okay, so one down, I have no idea how many to go. But in order to do this, I'm just going to erase these lines because I don't want to get messed up. And let's go to the next carbon. Okay, how many things are around this carbon? Well, this one looks very similar. It's got one single bond. It's got another single bond. That's two things. And it's got the double bond. That's three things. So three things, three letters. This one's also SP2. Okay. We're picking up the pace here. Love it. But you can kind of see what we're doing. Now let's go to the next carbon. So this one, what's it got? Well, it's got a single bond, that's one thing. It's got another single bond, that's two things. It's got the double bond, that's three things. So same thing again, three things, sp2. Let's keep going. Next carbon, it's got a single bond. That's one thing. It's got another single bond, two things. It's got the double bond. That's a total of three things. So three things. SP2 again. How fun is this, guys? Last carbon. <laughs> so let's keep going. This one right here. Whee. There you go. Single bond. Single bond. And a double bond. So three things, sp2, there you go. Now, is it a coincidence that, you know, all of them were sp2? Um, in this drawing, not really, because they all look very similar, but just know that there could have been a carbon that could have been sp3 hybridized. 
So that's why we like to do all of them, just to double check. Now, let's head for the nitrogen. There's only one nitrogen, thank goodness, and let's see what's going on. Well, this nitrogen has a single bond, so that's one thing. It's got a lone pair, so that's two things, and it's got the double bond. So, that looks like three things to me. So, three things, three letters, they're all sp2. Jeez. Now, here we coming down to hydrogen, right? They did say hybridization of all atoms. However, hydrogen only has one electron, right? It's only got one electron, and it's got one valence electron. So that one electron is the valence. There are no orbitals that can be put together to make an overlap, right? Because a, hy a hydrogen does not have P electrons, and it definitely doesn't have any Ds. The only thing it has is an S. So technically, hydrogen, there's five of them here, but they cannot hybridize. So when we're talking about, we'll say cannot hybridize, meaning that you will never do your SP, SP2 for a hydrogen. Hydrogen, if I can, just put it on this side over here, hydrogen is only allowed to have a 1s orbital. So there's no p's, there's no d's. So just know that if they were asking for hydrogen, it would never be an sp, sp3, sp2. It's just a 1s. Now, that answers the question. But now the second part is, will these electrons be delocalized? Now, delocalized is the inverse of localized electrons. When electrons stay local, right, if somebody stays local, they're not traveling. They stay in the same spot. But if you're delocalizing, you're able to uh, go between two elements. What you're really looking for here for delocalized electrons are double bonds. Because if, if we're talking about electrons that can be delocalized, chances are it's going to be those electrons found in a double bond. Specifically, the p orbital of a double bond, right? The pi orbital. Now, in this case, we have three different double bonds, right? That are going in a ring fashion. And take note as to all the hybridizations of all the elements in that ring. They're all sp2, right? So they all basically hold the same amount of weight in terms of electrons and sharing the electrons. Now, generally speaking, if you do have a um, if you have elements in a ring that all have the same hybridization, they will be able to basically uh, share those electrons in a double bond. For example, right? If I drew this in another way where I had the carbon and the carbon and the carbons, right? If I just draw out the structure and we have the nitrogen over here. Now, technically, I put the double bond, or in this structure, the double bond was put facing this carbon and the single bond here. Could we have put the double bond down here and the single bond up, up here with the lone electrons? Yeah, right? And the same thing goes with this type of double bond. Instead of having the double bond with this CC, I could add the double bond with this CC. And as you can see, that these electrons are now being swapped. They're becoming delocalized. Same thing here, I'll have the single bond here and a double bond up top here with all the hydrogens. So one hydrogen, one hydrogen, one hydrogen, an H, and an H. Now, this technically is another representation of this structure. This would be classified as a resonance structure. And any time that you can write a resonance structure, you have electrons that are delocalized or can be swapped between bond to bond. So, these electrons are delocalized. So you got delocalized electrons here. You're able to draw a resonance structure, and any time that you can draw a resonance structure, 
Those electrons are always delocalized. They are being able to be shared between multiple atoms. And that's it. Hopefully this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. I hope you're all having a great day out there. Let's keep studying hard. And good luck on your tests and quizzes. I will talk to you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.